you can talk to the AI and the AI can talk back to you. I mean, uh, we're already getting there. For, mm -hmm. You know, I'm yeah. using uh, an AI called Pi, which uh, Reed Hoffman started. Uh, mm -hmm. And that has a relation, you know, you can talk to it and it can talk to you about your life. That's sort of interesting. It's a little, a little bit uh, too uh, enthusiastic in its answers, right? It, it, it doesn't quite get to human level, mm -hmm. but it's, it's getting pretty close. So you, you can just see in a... Welcome to the Risk Never Sleeps podcast in which we discuss the people that are protecting patient care. I'm Ed Gaudet, the host of our program, and today we're going to take a, a different approach. We're going to talk to a technology writer, author, futurist, among other things. I am pleased to be joined today by Robert Scoble. Robert, well, welcome. Welcome to the program. Honored to be here. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. Um, followed your work and, and read some of your work. Um, obviously, uh, my brother is a much bigger fan, but um, <laughs> uh, I've got a lot, to, a lot of questions to ask you about yeah. uh, that, about what's what's been happening as of late as it relates to VR and other technology. So, but before we do that, let's a little bit about you. How did you, how did you get into tech? Oh man, uh, I was Apple's first child laborer. <laughs> ah. <laughs> True story. My mom uh, built Apple II motherboards for Hildy Licht, who built them for Apple. Yeah. And so we built uh, Apple II motherboards when I was 13 years old in 1978. And cool. that literally did get me my start because uh, a decade later, I was going to community college and I saw a car with the name of Waz. Well, I knew Waz built the motherboards I was staring at. Yeah. And so I wanted to meet him in the worst way. And so I stalked him and uh, met him up, met up with him. And he was my first celebrity interview in the tech industry, you know, so. Plus when was did, that? What year was that? That's great. 1989. 89. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, when I was oh. going to school. <laughs> and so, yeah, he he gave us like $40,000 worth of Macintoshes for our journalism department and got me oh. started. I still have his phone number memorized. <laughs> <even>. <laughs> does it still work? <laughs> it, sure, it sure does. Uh, he, do not he, share it with our listeners, please. Well, he likes simple <laughs> numbers, right? He actually uh, said he he had two, 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 or something like that, right? Uh, and he said that's a useless number to have because all sorts of babies would pick up their parents' cell phone and start hitting two, 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 two. So he had to put an eight on the end of it or something like that to... Ah, really interesting. Oh, that's great. Um, and uh, and you're you're based out in California. You live still, yeah, live Silicon in California. Valley. Yeah, yeah. So I that led up into a, a whole career where I've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and worked at Microsoft as a strategist and worked at Fast Company Magazine doing doing video show and doing editing and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, all yeah, sorts of well, stuff. Worked well, at cool. Rackspace for seven years. Oh, Rackspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now uh, D and D player. Atari 2600 player? No, I was an Apple II guy. You're an Apple II. From the very oh, start. I grew up in Cupertino, California. I had to be Apple II. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no Atari for you. That's it. Although, so you know, I, Steve Jobs. Atari with, lives there too, you know? Yeah, Steve, Steve, his first job, Steve Jobs at uh, Atari. Yes. Yeah, and I've um, talked to uh, the guy who started Atari too. So, yeah, oh, all cool. sorts of fun stuff. Cool, cool, cool. All yeah, right. but so that got uh, me to see the world. And I think where you're going with patient safety is I've done all sorts of stuff and talked to a lot of hospital administrators because of my career and my books, mm -hmm. um, mostly on spatial computing, which is augmented reality and AI. Um, and that still hasn't really happened yet for consumers. Uh, Apple just announced its first one, uh, which right. comes out next year. So we'll see how mm -hmm. how that does. Well, that that will do that will do well, I'm sure. Um, It'll so do it's, well, but they can't make enough. So, really, that first product is to get everybody excited. Uh, they're going to take like half the stores and use those for demo pods, um, and get everybody excited about augmented reality. So, so that when you uh, see a product that Apple comes out with that you really want, like glasses, mm -hmm. you're ready for it, right? Yeah. Apple's so. so they're so disciplined and and take such a long approach to things that other companies just can't. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, now, are you a screen guy, screen or no screen on the on the VR headset? Um, screen, screen. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, wait, you you don't want a screen? <laughs> no, I just I you know there's some was it Argo Design that uh, sort of the no screen uh, uh, group. Uh, oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think screens are real important, uh, you know, to be able to see the vi virtuality. There's mm -hmm. glasses that don't have screens like uh, Meta and um, Ray-Ban have a yeah. partnership and the Ray-Bans only have a camera. They don't have a screen uh, to avoid some of the freaky factor kind of things, but also to avoid just wearing out the battery because mm -hmm. the small little batteries that go into glasses just not quite there yet yeah you know? well apple will figure out that that the, you know the motion sickness issues um, associated with, with vr oh absolutely yeah. Yeah. so it's uh let's let's dive into your futuristic brain here for seconds 2024 what does the world look like from a technology perspective are we blade runner or damnation alley <laughs> i don't know blade runner <laughs> or damnation I, was thinking more than, I was thinking more like the movie her <laughs> ah. there you go you know yeah. where you have a airpod yeah. in your ear and you can uh uh you can talk to the ai and the ai can talk back to you i mean uh we're already getting there for mm -hmm. you know i'm yeah. using uh an ai called pi which uh reed hoffman started uh mm -hmm. and that has a relation you know you can talk to it and it can talk to you about your life that's sort of interesting. It's a little, a little bit uh, too uh, enthusiastic in its answers, right? It, it, it doesn't quite get to human level, mm -hmm. but it's it's getting pretty close. So you, you can just see in a over the next year or two that these things are going to get better and better and better, and to the place where people are going to talk to them all. Yeah, yeah, and 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 what are the and have you thought through implications on in, in terms of healthcare delivery and in terms of yeah, yeah, cybersecurity? Well, a, a few things. I mean, I, you could come at it a bunch of different ways. I mean, um, I worked with a company called MetaView, uh, which came out of Cleveland Clinic, mm -hmm. and they use a uh, Hololens and built a special s software for surgeons, right? So they're uh, trying to make surgery safer for your uh, patients because it'll show them where on the human body they can turn on their cutting tools, right? You know? And they're overlaying the scans on top of your body using a whole bunch of AI. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, that's one way to look at it. I've also done um, a psychiatrist uh, hmm. um, therapy session uh, just a 30 minute therapy session. And she was using a system that listens to both of us mm. and sends strips out all the personal identifiable information and then sends that transcript over to chat GPT and along with six or seven uh, specialized prompts that a doctor wrote and it spits back a uh, notes on your session, like really scientific detailed notes on mm. what it picked up. Like it on my session, we talked about uh, sexual abuse because I was sexually abused when I was a child and uh, talked about all sorts of uh, issues I was dealing with in life. And it said, oh, you it looks like you have PTSD. <laughs> and it's almost starting to uh, recommend, you know, wow. treatments just from a 30 minute conversation. That's right? incredible. So it is absolutely incredible. You know, so we start thinking about, oh, this is a new world where we're going to have AIs listening to us all the time, seeing, hearing things that, you know, figuring out who we are. That can be used for good and it can also be used for bad. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole bunch of arguing to do with HIPAA and all sorts of stuff uh, to make sure that patients in this new world remain safe and that they feel uh, safe to go to you know, therapy or doctors in the future because they're going to you know be listened to uh, by these ais to, to to do some really interesting things yeah it really requires a, a, a whole way of a new way of thinking about control of data oh, yeah. um from an opt-in opt-out perspective and uh the the notion of hip i mean you is HIPAA is HIPAA relevant in ten years? It absolutely is, um, you know, but it's going to be very different because mm -hmm. you know the kinds of data that the HIPAA people were worried about fifteen years ago when they were, you know, working on the on the original rules. Uh, they didn't know that there was an AI coming along that's going to listen right. to you or read read all your medical records or look at your uh, scans, you know, from your MRIs or your CAT scans, right? Um, and by the way, I, I had a full body MRI uh, done at Pranuvo, which is a new uh, startup, mm -hmm. cost 2,500 bucks. And then the doctor walked through my brain looking for brain cancers or Whoa. tumors 
walk through my heart looking for different problems, look, w- oh. walk through all the, uh, my organs looking for different problems and then look through my legs and my toes, you know, making sure that nothing was bad down there. So, uh, and, and the doctor who, uh, the entrepreneur and doctor who set this up uh, said, I'm training an AI to do this automatically. So you just go in and get a scan and it'll tell you, oh, you have uh, Looks like you have a hernia, you know, or you, <laughs> right? Or it looks like you have a, you know, a, a cancer tumor. So you, you know, you better go get that looked at more deeply. This would have saved my friend's life, right? I, I had a friend; his name was Brandon Works, and he had colon cancer when he was forty years old, thirty-nine mm-hmm. years old, mm-hmm. and the doctors missed it. And because he was too young for colon cancer, most people with colon cancer get it in after they're 60, right? Mm-hmm. Which is why they ask you, you know, when you're 50 or 55 to start getting colonoscopies and mm-hmm. getting a camera put up your your ear, right? <laughs> to figure out, do you mm-hmm. have cancers up there? Yeah. Well, if he had had a MRI, he would have been, the cancers would have been caught Wow. And maybe uh, would have been treatable. Colon cancer is very treatable if you catch it early enough. If right. it spreads, you know, because you missed it, that's uh, hard to hard to survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, a lot to unppack there. Um, no, no, yeah. pun, no pun intended. But, no. <laughs> is, technology is changing medicine, isn't it? It, it is. You know? It is. I mean, imagine twenty forty, like it's uh, getting an MRI is like going into a photo booth, the equivalent of going into a photo booth, right? At like Walmart or maybe uh, in some in some mall, and you're gonna have a variety of devices on you. You know, I mean, we we're wearing Apple watches and Fitbits and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I have an Aura ring on that watches you know certain vital signs, mm-hmm. but those sensors are getting more and more detailed. Uh, I think uh, in the next year or two, uh, Apple's going to have one that does uh, blood pressure. Right, mm-hmm. so now. Mm-hmm. They can warn you, hey, it looks like your blood pressure's up today. You better, you know, yeah. uh, take some medicine or change your lifestyle, right? <laughs> Go see a doctor, you know? So, what, um, what's the aura ring? I don't, I, what is that um, for you? Uh, I have it in the other room. Oh. It's a, a ring with a bunch of sensors. It's mm-hmm. like an Apple watch. It watches mm-hmm. me sleep, my oh, sleep, wow. set, you know, watches me exercise and mm-hmm. gives about, me Does it do oxygen saturation or? Yeah, it does the same shit that the, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, so, same stuff that the Apple Watch does. Right? That's okay. We can we do yeah, yeah. limit limited it's profanity a, on this show. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be safe for your audience, sir. That's um, right. That's right. No, it has a bunch of. It's just like yeah. an Apple Watch. Okay. It, it does basically the same kinds of things an Apple Watch mm-hmm. does, yeah, but never, it's much. It's much never, smaller, so got it. it's yeah. nicer to carry around. Yeah. Never, never, never heard of it. Um, which brings up this question. What's the best technology you've seen that never made it to market? No, that's an interesting question. Cause it, eventually things come back. The problem is that there's a lot of things that were too early, right? Yeah. Augmented yeah. Google glass is a good example of that, right? It really didn't do anything, but everybody thought it did a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of things, right? Like yeah. it would record you for 24 hours and i uh, know everything about it. No, it, it it could record for forty five minutes, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. didn't it didn't do as good as a GoPro camera on a on a ski helmet or something, right? Right, you right, know? right. So that kind of there's lots of examples of that where where it was just too early. the The technology just wasn't quite there, or it was the first one into the market and. They made a lot of mistakes because they're pioneers and trying to get something out. And then somebody like a company like Apple sits back and waits for them to just go away or waits for them to uh, um, show all the mistakes and then comes in with a product that re- repositions everybody that existed before is lame. The, mm-hmm. the, uh, the Vision Pro, the, the new uh, mm-hmm. spatial computer they just announced is a good example of that. They had seven years to watch uh, Meta with its Quest mm-hmm. make mistakes, like put Meta put crappy headphones in there, so you can't really really listen to music in it, right? Uh, at least not the way you're going to listen to music if you have one of these Apple headsets. Um, and they they made a lot of other mistakes that they Apple fixed, right? Uh, uh, the screens, the chips in front of your eyes that Apple waited until Sony could put 5K chips in front of your eyes. Now, the Quest only has 2K screens. 
So the quest, you can't read text very well. Mm -hmm. So you can't use it for email or Facebooking or yeah. tweet deck, right? Yeah. Uh, or, uh, you know, all the kinds of stuff that most people do at work. And so, right. So they can come in mm. late and just come out with a really nice product. And that's Apple's modest operandi. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an interesting problem to solve because in some ways, you know, I can imagine one of the problems is how do we keep it on longer? Like, how do we keep, make sure that it stays on longer, right? It's not just single threaded, um, but it right. can be used for other things, right? Yeah, it, it's it's still a problem with the Apple headset. This is uh, 280 grams. It's still too heavy. Too heavy, yeah. Um, after about an hour, you you start noticing it a lot, right? It's like, yeah. oh, this is starting to become uncomfortable on your face. Right. And they know this, right? They have, they know that the mass market won't buy until it gets to be something like a lightweight pair of glasses. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once it gets down to that form factor, people start understanding uh, and be willing to put something on their face. But these first devices are big and heavy and yeah. clunky, right? And yeah. Two, yeah, two we'll years out or five years? What do you think? Closer to five. Five, yeah. Wow. Uh, my friend at uh, uh, Unity says it's ten. <laughs> so you know, wow. Uh, which which might make sense for the mass market. I mean, you know, we're a long way from a perfect product that people are like. Oh, I need a pair of those, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. it's. It's a ways, but you're going to see a lot of innovation over the next five years. I think mm -hmm. five years, me and you are wearing a pair of glasses. Maybe a lot of doctors and nurses are wearing a pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because I that's would wear them. There. I would definitely wear them. Certainly, if you're a surgeon or mm -hmm. or a nurse, you Which know, I'm if not. you're walking into a patient's room, why don't you know everything about yeah. that patient as you're walking in the room? Why yeah. can't you talk to all the machines in the room? Right. The, mm -hmm. The machine's keeping you breathing, the machine's monitoring you, the machine's uh, dripping stuff into your bloodstream, right? Yeah. Uh, why can't you talk to all those machines and know what's going on the minute you walk well, in? Well, there's so, so, many, so many applications for that. I mean, imagine, I, I have three daughters, so you can imagine the, the dating application where the my daughters have glasses that... <laughs> Tell you a good guy or a dirt bag, right? <laughs> in, in Maybe you're time. looking for a dirt bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, right? So that's true too, right? <laughs> There's some people who like that. They that matters to people that, in prison trying to get a dirt bag. <laughs> that's that is so true, Robert. <laughs> I don't know, man. All right, all right but, no, but no. you're absolutely right yeah, on no. the the AIs. So here's a here's an example. If you ask uh, GPT, right, this new AI that you can talk mm -hmm. to on your yeah. phone, um, hey, uh, give me ten restaurants near me, like within ten minute drive. It it does. It gives you a list. But if you say uh, there's four other people in the car and here's their food preferences, it gives you a completely different set of exactly. lists. Right? Yeah. It's much yeah. more customized, much much more personalized, much more accurate. Um, you know, and so we're going to figure out how to give these things some of our data to get better results. Back, yeah. Right. And well, it's security versus convenience. There's always that balance of, it, right. How much do I want to give away for the convenience of something? It turns out you're going to give it all away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, I, I completely agree with that. I, I've, I've believed that from day one. I just think people yeah, are 20 years from now, everybody's just going to people and here, it won't matter, right. Then privacy, what, what does it matter? Because everyone's giving it away and we're all. You know, it doesn't really matter. We're all authentic and we are ourselves and it doesn't really matter that, you know, I've got let me, this problem let me count with that how problem. many microphones I have just on the table in front of me. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, uh, five in one camera. That's eight, uh, uh, nine uh, in one headphone, right? So you, you, just on my table, I have uh, like 15, 20 microphones, right? And are they listening to me? No, but, uh, you know, this camera is, right? And and heck, we're on Zoom, <laughs> so our voices That's are going right. to some servers. That's right. Listening. Someone's listening to us. Exactly. And you're recording this, so I'm in recording five it. Years, <laughs> in five years, do you t tell a new AI to go through all your Zoom recordings and yeah. look for patterns yeah. or look for you know? And then all of a sudden, it's uh, editing a new video of all your videos of the last. Well, uh, I just I just use AI to create a headshot. Have you done that yet? Oh yeah, uh, that's creepy oh, yeah. as hell. <laughs> It's it's crazy what's it's coming. Pretty yeah. accurate and creepy yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So uh, and the more pictures you give it, the, yeah. the better that can work, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, the more data you give the AI, the better it, the better work. it works. Speaking yeah. of creepy, what do you make of threads? Um, that's not creepy yet. Although, yeah, you, you have to do you do have to sign the terms of service and give it all your data. <laughs> it's like exactly it's like oh, Mark wants all of my data. Okay, everything, fine. Everything. Oh, yeah. You know, the microphones, the the motion sensor, the location sensor. Give it all. <laughs> um. It it has taken a chunk out of Twitter. It hasn't taken the whole thing. Everybody's like, oh, Twitter's dead. No, yeah. no, no. Twitter yeah. actually got better because all of these people uh, moved over to threads and they tend to be people who hate Elon. So there's a there's a community of feel over there that's interesting. Yeah. And it's very different, a little different than Twitter. The the actual app is really nice. It's smooth, it's easy to read, uh, all that. Mm -hmm. The onboarding process uh, is nice for normal people because you can bring in your, Inst it asks you to bring in all your Instagram friends, right? Mm. So would you like to follow all 4,000 4, people you followed on Instagram? Oh, sure. Bring them all in, right? <laughs> and in fact, it it even shows you who hasn't yet joined threads from it. It's made oh. by Instagram, right? Yeah, so right. it's tied yeah, yeah. with Instagram. And cool. so you get your Instagram social graph pretty quick finding other people, you know, people who followed people on Instagram followed them because they're good at visuals, right? They're yeah. they, they have good furniture or art or photos or videos, right? They're good at that. It's not a threads is more like Twitter. It's a, ch a text chat room, basically. It's, uh, you know, people who are good at photography don't necessarily uh, translate to being good at threads right? Right. so now you have to find new people to follow it's like I'm, and then there's mm. just not the good uh twitter has really good muting tools uh you can mute a word right so if you don't want to see trump anymore you can go in your settings add trump as a muted oh, word that's cool right? actually yeah it's really yeah, nice that's a really twitter good feature is filterable and threads yeah. is not <laughs> yet <laughs> yeah yeah that's and right. so threads is noisier which, because it's only a week old, that's yeah. okay, you know, but in six months, is noise going to matter? Yeah. They'll but, you know, in six they'll months, they'll have a filter and yeah. they'll have a better uh, way to pick your friends, I'm sure. Ex so Exactly. So so you've done some work in healthcare. Um, what advice would you give to new, new CISOs, new chief security officers that are coming into healthcare or aspiring ones? Uh learn learn the systems you got and learn the regulations and see what you can do to make your systems more secure um i'm not a good expert on that um there are lots of people who help you with security you know and hospitals are getting hit with these uh viruses that are you know taking down their their systems yeah, yeah. and so if you have a C cso who's uh up to date on uh you know, building a, a resilient uh, system, that that would be a good thing. Um, I don't have advice to those people. And for not knowing and not having advice. If you have a CSO job at Kaiser Permanente yeah. or something like you, that, right? You better know your shit. <laughs> you, gave, you gave pretty good advice though right there. I mean, resiliency is so critical. And because the, the truth is, as you know, it's just not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You're going to get hit at some point. You're going to get it's not possible to, to do you see. have everything backed up? Yes. Have you yes. tested the right. system <laughs> for getting backed up? Do you know how long it'll take you to get back up? If, right. Right. if let's say 40% of all your computers get shut down because yeah. everybody's clicking on a link and getting a, a virus or, or getting a, you know, one of these things that shuts down your computer and then starts going after other things. Do you have a, a way to get back? You know, you better have a plan for that. Uh, do you have a plan for understanding your network traffic in deep detail? Is there a printer in the copy room that's spitting a lot of packets over to China? Well, that might t tell you <laughs> something's a little wacky with that, that printer, right? So you, yeah. uh, uh, you know, several of the security people have shown me systems like this where you can walk around your network once it's put into a system like this and really understand what's going on in your network and look for threats and look for anomalies and look for problems. Yeah. Do you have a, a, you know, a bleeding edge security system that protects your, your workers and knows uh, what 
patterns to look for, right? And or in your cloud computing, do you have honeypots mm -hmm. that are uh, triggers, right? If a hacker gets into your back end and starts, you know, downloading everybody's email, well, is there a way to catch that person? Is there a way to sense that person? Is there a way to kick them off? Is there a way to close down those ports without hurting your your users, your your uh, customers? Yeah. So well said from someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I've been, to, it's, it's pretty, I've been to Israel. I, pretty damn good, Robert. <laughs> I've been to Israel a few times. Oh, so I, I picked up a few <laughs> things from those people because the you know checkpoint and other companies came out of Israel for a reason because uh, yeah, they exactly. have these problems at at a, a nation state. Uh, yes, for yeah. you, right. Yeah, no, and and everyone everyone stronger together, right? Everyone starts off at a very young age protecting Israel. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And and then, you know, do you have a way to make sure everything is updated on your systems, right? Are you still mm -hmm. running Windows 95? Oh, your, geez. You know, there are, there's some of you out there that still, you know, yeah, yeah, we're running. We lot. know, we know you're out there. We're going to find you. <laughs> you know? And it might be running a stupid ass machine right in a surgery room yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a security threat, yeah. right? Because now that system can be hacked, therefore easier. Therefore, somebody's going to hack it and start right. using it to get in access into other yeah. things, right? So you have to make an inventory of, do we have everything up to date? Is everything uh, being professionally managed and all that? Mm -hmm. now, you know, that's the CSO's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. So uh, if you weren't doing tech, any other passion, anything you're passionate about outside of tech? I love new things, actually. Huh. Um I mean, I fell in love with new things. I love, you know, I learned TV early on a $130,000 TV camera. So mm -hmm. I'd probably be in TV or media anyways. And I love new things. If you tell me there's a new restaurant opening up, let's go. Right? You know? <laughs> I don't want to eat yeah. the old ones. You know, I've, I've been there. I want to go to the new new place. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. New things. Um, media. Uh -huh. I probably still being cool. there i'm still into photography i'm still playing like i have a new 360 camera from insta 360 and i'm still okay. playing with that doing innovative you know media kind of stuff nice nice i don't okay know. we're gonna get a little personal here if you could go back uh, in time what would you tell your 20 year old self um don't be an asshole <laughs> <laughs> Okay, best answer yet. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's the best answer yet. Uh, is that's it? Good. Yes, yes, uh, yes, it is because it's real. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably um, go back at twenty years old, you know, and tell and tell them about trauma, brain trauma, yeah. and the fact that you have to see a professional and and really work at. Um, fixing your brain trauma because that's really what caused me trouble and caused me to be an asshole here and there. Yeah. So, yeah. I get yes. it. If you um, have sexual abuse or if you have parents yeah. abusive or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that, or, or if you were in a shooting or have any kind of trauma, right. Uh, mm -hmm. The PTSD is caused by this kind of trauma in military people. Right. Uh, if you have that kind of trauma, you need professional help and need yeah. to work on it. And I didn't work on it for decades. Mm -hmm. People, a lot of people who have sexual abuse, particularly men, um, they don't want to talk to anybody about it. And they, they are shame, ashamed of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that, is uh, I've had people come up to com to me at conferences and say, "Oh, after you admitted you, you had sexual abuse, I started talking to people and yeah. it completely changed their lives." So, um, yeah, you got to talk about your trauma <laughs> with somebody. No, it's it's <laughs> no, it's it's so true and it's funny. It's not funny, but it's uh, <laughs> I um uh I I've been an alcoholic most of my life and recently went sober about a year and a half ago. And congrats, uh, that's a big deal. You. It was right. a big deal, and I. Put, That's put why we there. celebrate. You go to meetings, you know. Right. Uh, I, I I do occasionally, but I, I've been. Um, See, I'm not. I, that's bad of me because Alcoholics Anonymous is, puts a lot of emphasis on an, on an anonymity. But yeah. you admitted you were an alcoholic. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> and, and, and my point, my point was, I, I I communicated. I put it on Facebook for a couple of reasons, and I was like, like you know, your point you made. I was amazed at how many people reached out to me directly to say wow you inspired me i had a problem i didn't realize it you know yeah. thanks so much or you know your the courage of you saying that 
really made me look inwardly and I've changed my, I mean, I, I just was completely blown away because I had no idea. Yeah. And I was doing it more to keep myself honest. Like, I'm like, if I put it out there on Facebook, though, I got to do it. I got to live it now. <laughs> I studied uh, addiction, my own addiction and other people's addiction. Uh, a research, a brain researcher in Israel said, um, people who have accountability to others mm -hmm. have a high, much higher rate of sobriety than people who aren't. And okay. so that's actually a legit trick. To yeah. let other people know, hey, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm having, tr I'm struggling here. I need help, you know. And sure enough, people come out of the woodwork. People at conferences now, they come up uh, with a glass of water for me, you know, or a or a coke or something. Yeah, right. And it's sort of a subtle hint. Hey, we're watching you. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, no, I get. You yeah, don't need to go to the bar. We're we're keeping yeah. you away from well, the bar. Well, you know? well, the, <laughs> the thing we all share is we're all human, right? At the end of the day, we all are human. We all have our own struggles. Everyone has their own struggle. That's yeah. why it's like be kind because you know you never know what the other person's going through, and um, no. most likely they're going through a lot, a lot more shit than you are. And, um, so no, Maybe. I appreciate that and I yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. you and I appreciate your honesty and openness. Um, that's why we go to meetings to hear That's why we go to meetings. Like, that's right. That's right. Shit, man. My problems are a little <laughs> smaller right. than your problems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, you're right. Kill no, somebody, right? That's you part know? of it. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. There's people so, in meetings who have to stand up and say, you yeah. know, I got in this program because I, I had an accident yeah. and killed somebody. Right. Yeah. So no, it's awful. I, I didn't have that problem, right? No, so. no me either. Amen. Um, riskiest thing you've ever done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it, right? This is the Risk Never Sleeps podcast. So. Other than telling my boss, uh, Steve Bomber, that he was uh, wrong in public <laughs> on my blog. <laughs> I've done that. That's not risky. <laughs> That's well, that, that, that can end badly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it can end badly. It, it didn't. He had to apologize in public in a week, you know, but yeah. um, that was some sort of risk. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, you know. That's bring, courage, man. That's courage. Bringing a child into this life. Although, yeah, that's, that's risky. <laughs> that's risky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, t typically people will say, I jumped off a bridge or I skydived or, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, in terms of physical risk... I like skiing, but I never, I never was into jumping off things like some yeah. of my friends were. And some of my friends really liked to, you know, oh, there's a cliff, let's go off them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not me. You didn't do any I'm helicopter very, skiing. I'm a fairly risk adverse kind of guy, ah, at least okay. with the physicality. Partly because my eyes suck, right? Uh, I, mm. I have really bad eyes, so the chances that I'm going to nail a jump is just not. <laughs> Not there. So I, you know, I like those, uh, groom slopes, intermediate yeah, yeah. slopes, you know, I, I'll uh, ski there. I, I'll stay off the weird stuff. I take my risks with, you know, trying to get somebody interesting to say something like mm -hmm. what you're doing, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, trying to, uh, change the world with technology or, you know, going into Bill Gates office and telling him he's wrong, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. All right. <laughs> So I know I, I know a couple of times, right? <laughs> I know I noticed there's a, a doll. Is that a doll on the shelf behind me? What is that? Uh the channel nine guy? No, the other the red, the person in the red. Oh picture. yeah. I had a uh, uh, uh high fidelity, which uh Philip Rosedale uh made second life, but he had a, yeah. a VR thing for a while and he scanned me with a 3D scanner. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then they uh, printed me out on a 3D printer. <laughs> that's, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, I had this. Of course, uh, people on our pod, uh, you who are listening to audio, have no idea what can't I'm see talking it, yeah. about. But but I have a little, I don't know, a nine inch high version of myself. Yes. Um, I went into a, a studio which had a, a room with I don't know 50 cameras, and I stood in there and 50 cameras shot, and then that made a uh, volumetric model. And then that could get sent over to a 3D printer company and print me out. <laughs> and yeah. now I, I, uh, you from know, a, from, I can from use a, this to be inside VR like an avatar. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. From, from a distance, I thought it was like a Stretch Armstrong. If you remember that toy when you were a kid, if you ever played. Oh it. yeah, the Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was saying. Um, all right. Let last people less, do the 3D printing stuff for uh, the tops of wedding cakes, right? They, yeah. They get yeah. 
boyfriend or girlfriend yeah, it's cool. into one of these 3D scanners and then they'll print uh you know a 3D scan of them yeah. holding hands or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They 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 made they made protective gear during the pandemic with 3D printing. Yeah. Um, because they were out of it, right? So they you know some uh, CIOs that were really into uh, inventive and creative they leveraged 3D printing to do that, which yep. I thought was 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 awesome. Um, so so you, you and I talked about this before we recorded. I won't say what club we belong to. We belong to a similar club. So yeah. I got to ask you: top five musical albums on a desert island. What would they be? Oh man, that's so hard for me to pick because I have uh, I have the world's largest collection of Dolby Atmos music, surround sound, dead spatial audio music, uh, and I have. <laughs> Almost a hundred thousand tracks in my playlist. Ah, so, me too. Me too. But, got, I, I have five thousand CDs, and I, I burned them all in this brand. I love device. Skrillex, and I love Swedish House Mafia. Uh, you know, so <laughs> oh my God, that's great. All right, all right. I went to Coachella four times. I I always loved the electronic music and the yeah. EDM kind of music. But I, my playlist, I have everything from classical to church music to uh, jazz music to yeah. rock and roll to, you know, uh, quiet, atmospheric, mm -hmm. meditation music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's hard for me to pick one. <laughs> what, what, what was some, what were some of the best shows you've been to? Live shows? Oh, man. Kiss was pretty good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. See, now, now we're, now we're connecting. Detroit Rock City, great album. Kiss great was album. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jason Derillo, uh, I was in the front row with my wife and he was like two feet from me dancing, sweating, spraying his DNA all over us. <laughs> that was pretty good. A lot of screaming, a lot of screaming. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, I've been to 150 concerts. So let me think, um, you know, I've been to the who, which was pretty insane. Yeah. Who's great. Uh, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah. Did you go great. to. You mentioned Coachella. Did you go to Desert Trip when they had it out there? No. no. Yeah, three three day. They called it Old Cella. <laughs> oh yeah, I I I watched a piece of that. That yeah. looked really amazing. It was great. Yeah, I went I went to it. It was it was amazing. Six yeah. uh, six concerts in three days. Um, Stones, yeah. Dylan, The Who, yeah. Roger Waters, yeah. Paul McCartney. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Glitch Mob at uh, Coachella oh. was pretty interesting. Was Glitch pretty Mob. amazing. Oh. Yeah, because it was in the Sahara. So Coachella has seven venues, right? Yeah. And um, venue one is like Arcade Fire and, and that kind of music. Yeah. And uh, the Sahara Tent is all electronic music. Glitch Mob is the one that uh, GoPro used in their videos. Ah, okay. what, if you've seen a GoPro video, yeah. Yeah. that's... Uh, the song that's playing is Glitch Mob. Okay. And there were so many people who wanted to get into the Sahara tent that uh, the pressure was immense, right? You, you couldn't move. Oh. And at one point, the crowd started jumping, and it was like a carpet of humans coming at you. Awesome. And you didn't even have to jump, and you were jumping. <laughs> yeah, because everybody were, was that's right. You're pressed so close together. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's great. Funny. I used to uh, I used to go to a lot of punk shows when I was younger, and so I, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, get get into the uh, uh, mosh pit. Mosh pit, yeah, yeah. Go hit some people. You yeah, know, we called it slam dancing back then. But there we go. <laughs> it evolved. It evolved like everything else. Well, look, Robert, I don't know. I've been to South by twenty five times. <laughs> I've seen so many really great musicians. Of no. um, Here's one for you. So a, a friend of mine and I were walking around New Orleans. He lives in New Orleans. He's a lawyer there. Er, Ernie, the er attorney, is his blog name. And uh, we were walking around on a Saturday. He goes, oh, you know, I am passes to the uh, House of Blues Foundation Room. Um, I'm a member there. And I think Buddy Guy's playing today. And oh, I go, Who's I've seen Buddy. It, it gets worse. Oh. I go, this was like at 4 p.m. on a Saturday. I go, who's Buddy Guy? <laughs> and he goes, dude, Buddy Guy's just like one of the best guitar players alive right Were now. Were you being serious I, or? I, I was being serious. Oh, I, no. I Buddy Guy was. Oh, All right. God. It gets better. So the foundation room is uh, on the top floor looking yeah. down at Buddy Guy playing on the stage. So we we're, were in, sitting around drinking, enjoying that. At one point, Buddy get, you know, um, has an unplugged, it has a wireless microphone and a wireless uh, guitar. He gets off the stage go and plays all the way through the crowd. There's like 2,000 people down on the first floor. Mm. So he walks through all those people saying hi, you know, playing. 
walks up the stairs, walks all the way around the balcony and sits right next to me. And so his fingers are like Gosh. from my, from my eyes, like, like, and for a song and a half, he's just sitting there playing and I'm looking at his fingers, like a, a foot away from it. <laughs> and I, two hours earlier, I had no idea who he was. <laughs> so, <laughs> You'll have to get to Chicago and go to, go to his, uh, go to the buddy, you know, buddy guys, uh, yeah. place. And you never know who walks in there. I've been there where you know, like mayors walked in and played with them and i mean others great great the, place to great venue to if see. you go to new orleans anybody make sure you go to preservation hall I don't go there first before you get your beignets and come <laughs> on right that's a good go, point go go to hall. go to because yeah. you might want to go back first yeah. of all right you might go this is amazing <laughs> Amen. i've been i've been Amen. to some concerts there they're just yeah. like <laughs> oh i know i love i love new orleans yeah um all right sir i wrote a love letter to new orleans that was printed in the new newspaper did you i did oh. my wife and i hooked up in new orleans so there's like i don't know <laughs> can i find it online uh maybe i don't really know how to find do you it. still have it uh, uh, i don't read it i'd oh. have to look for it okay <laughs> but it, wow. yeah it was a few yeah. years uh, uh the the uh Collision conference used to be down there, and, and yeah. plus, my wife and I used to plan conferences. And we used to have a conference, a couple conferences down there. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a special place for sure. It's a dirty, dingy, crappy oh, place, it, but though. you'll have the best food of your life. You'll see the best music of your life. Uh, you'll Nothing see the best like it. Pottery of your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And if yeah. you're if you're into art, like a block away from Bourbon Street are some really amazing oh, yeah. galleries oh, that yeah. you have to sort of get invited into. But, oh, man. The, the Faulkner's art. Bookstore. Faulkner, the Faulkner Bookstore is one of my yeah. favorite bookstores. And it's all good. Well, we didn't good. talk about protecting people's uh, patients. Nah, we didn't need to. We didn't need to. This is the beauty of this <laughs> podcast. We can talk about whatever we want to talk about. <laughs> Uh, uh, listen, thank you. I know you got a hard stop. So um, thank yeah. you very much for your time. Appreciate you. This has been terrific. And I'm sure my listeners will Thanks. get a lot of interesting insight. Um, and, you know, for someone that doesn't know security, you know security. Well, knowing I do have a Twitter list of all the CSOs. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <you can. laughs> so I, I, read, I read up what, what they're tweeting about because, you know, when they have a problem, they, they're all, uh, they do interesting uh, blogs and tweets about uh, the security problem of the day. You know, out of that, I uh, I recommend to my friends spend an hour a month just doing research on security, mm -hmm. figuring out how to increase your passwords, right? How to come up with a better password, how to, you know, uh, update your firewall on your Macintosh, right? All sorts of little things like that. You do that for a year, you're going to get increase your security mm -hmm. so that you're less likely to yeah. get hit by one of these uh problems that's come along we call that cyber hygiene yeah yeah you know and yeah. most people don't do it and that's right this is the problem and how many people have passwords that are simply password you know two 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 eight right <laughs> and so you you if you do a little bit of google searching you'll find out how to build a passphrase you know mm -hmm. how to increase your security a little bit a lot of people are like oh you know, you need to worry about that, Scoble, because you have a big audience and you're a big footprint. No, you need to worry about it because don't you have money in your bank account? You know, <laughs> yeah. that's what they're after. They're not after yeah. my follower account. <laughs> Some are, but, you know, mm -hmm. most are after the money. <laughs> so you yeah. got to worry about this if you're a part of modern society and most people right. don't. All right, sir. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. This is uh, Ed Gaudet signing off on the Risk Never Sleeps podcast. And if you're on the front lines protecting patient safety, remember, stay vigilant because risk never sleeps. And we are out. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it was great. That was fun. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm.